This is More Than Construction, a journey group podcast about building community. Hello, and welcome back to More Than Construction. I'm Nathan Walter alongside Aaron Ike. We talk a lot about community impact on this show, and Aaron and I are sitting here with three men who, in one way or another, have positively impacted the entire Sioux Falls community, region, and dare I say it, even the whole state of South Dakota. It's a bold statement, but I think I can honestly say that almost every resident of the Sioux Falls area has benefited from the work of these three men. Today, we're gonna talk about their legacy of positively impacting people and of building Journey Group into what it is today. It's my great privilege to introduce three of Journey Group's past shareholders, men who have shaped this company and who built their careers here, grew this company, and then passed it on to the next generation of leadership. So we're gonna hear their memories, impressions, and lessons learned at Journey through the years as we talk about their time here. So today we're joined by Dave Fleck, the former president of what was Sioux Falls Construction from 1998 to 2010. Tom Wilson, former vice president during that time period, and Brad Goldstein, also former vice president during that time. Welcome to the podcast, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to give each of you a chance to introduce yourselves. So Dave, let's start with you, a fellow Husker fan, if I'm not mistaken. You're going to cut that out though, right? The Husker <laughs> fan. <laughs> oh no, that stays. That stays. <laughs> well, thank you, Nathan. I started uh, at Sioux Falls Construction at that time in 1975. I had made a connection through a previous employer with Sioux Falls Construction, and that was my first job out of college after getting an engineering degree at Nebraska, was going to work at Nucor Steel in Norfolk. And a lot of Sioux Falls Construction guys were on that job, guys that were superintendents at the time and guys that were future superintendents to come and work at Sioux Falls Construction. So in 1975, do you remember approximately the population of Sioux Falls? I would guess it was, what, 75,000? 75,000. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Falls Park wasn't even close to what it looks like today. Yeah. <laughs> So, Tom, yes. let's have you introduce yourself next. I heard a rumor that you are the reason Aaron is here today. Is that well, true? Yeah. And that's true because he uh, I forgot about he that. was lost and we were trying to get a hold of him <laughs> to come to work. <laughs> I thought maybe the day we were pheasant hunting and he gave me your business card. Oh. I was a little lost that day as well. <laughs> yeah. I was lost a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so no that was that was one of the reasons yep. that i believe that you showed up here is i was edging you on a little bit because yep. <laughs> yep. there was an opportunity well just to give a little history of uh how i ended up here at sioux falls construction is it was in 1975 i was actually working for an engineering firm in mitchell at the time and i was representing the engineering firm on a job site down in Yankton at State Hospital, and it ended up that Sioux Falls Construction was the contractor. So I was working with the crews and doing all the construction staking and inspections and meetings and such. And about halfway through the job, Wendell Wisher, who was the leader of the asphalt division of Sioux Falls Construction, uh, tried to hire me. So I thought about that, and I says, well, no, I won't, I won't bail on my bosses, but when the job's done, let's talk. So that fall, when the job was completed, I came to Sioux Falls and interviewed with Jack Marshman, and a few weeks later, I was moving to Sioux Falls, and that was in October of 1975. So you guys both started the same year. We did. Yeah, I huh? started like uh, the end of February, and I was, I was late fall. <laughs> Cool. And Brad, in addition to being a notable businessman, I hear you're also a notable baseball player. Hmm. Yeah, I played until I was about 36 and I had to leave town to go to a project in Nebraska and that was the end of it. Wow. But I, uh, I went to uh, School of Mines, got an engineering degree 
That was back in uh, 72, and I had a low draft number. I figured I was going to be drafted, so I never interviewed. And when I got out of school, they did away with the draft. <laughs> so I spent the spring partying. <laughs> and uh, so me and a friend, two friends, uh, went to Gage Brothers and applied for jobs. And we got jobs building feed bunks. One day I told my boss, why am I building these when I could be designing these? So he goes up to the office, and the next day I'm in the office. Wow. They had four graduates from the School of Mines there. So I worked there for three years, and then uh, Yerke Construction for three years, and was a superintendent on the precast direction of Iowa's hospital. Wow. From there, I went to Dakota Contracting, and then I came to Sioux Falls Construction in August of 78. Yeah, that's about it. It's a history there. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I want to move our discussion into some memories of Journey Group that stick with you, that maybe made an impact on you. What memories come to mind when you think of something impactful that happened to you here? Well, I would say what impacted me most was Jack Marshman. Mm. You know, he was our mentor for all of us, basically, because mm -hmm. he was running the company. He had faith in us. And that's why all of our careers progressed as they did. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we did that for the young guys that are now the leaders of Journey Group. Yeah. We actually talked about that in the previous episode of this podcast. We talked to some of our project engineers about that culture of building up future leaders. And I think that is very unique to who this company is. Yeah, I would have to agree with what Tom said uh, Jack was a special guy. Just to show you, it's a trait of a good leader. The project manager for Nucor, he wasn't getting anything at all done and said, we got to have a different guy. Jack showed up and he's actually physically working on the yeah. job. And then Jack's involvement in the community. And I've always said this, when, when the guys that started Sioux Falls Construction took Sioux Falls in their name, they made a commitment to be involved in this community just because they took that name for their business. Yeah, absolutely. This community is very influenced by this company, and this company is very influenced by this community, for sure. I think the other thing that impressed me in the early years about the company was its diversity. And hmm. its diversity, to me, has been one of its success stories yeah because when i started i started in the field i was working on a bridge and then moved to interstate 29 the interstate was not done at that time and the company had just gotten seven bridges to build and then the company did asphalt paving and then they did building work yeah and even in the building division we have a great diversity from a lot of different contractors that Absolutely. focus on schools or they focus on ch mm -hmm. churches or they focus on one segment. Seems like we all worked on highway work, bridges, wastewater plants, and the building side. Yeah. Yeah, and what's interesting is that premise still is here today. As a, as a current shareholder, you know, we're always talking, even now today, how do we get more diverse? You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, markets change. You know, you have to be nimble with that and be willing to change and, and take on the people that can specialize in those areas and really push that in the company forward. Yeah, definitely. Tell me about bus trips to football games. <laughs> bus trips to football games in the middle of winter. Well... Are you talking about Husker football? Oh, that's the I one think, I was thinking I think about. That's that. yeah. Marlon said infamous bus trips. <laughs> what about the Vikings? I didn't know about a Husker's well, one, but there was there a Vikings was, yeah, one. That, that was company sponsored <laughs> bus trips. <laughs> yep. You know, as a Nebraska grad, we had a local group here in Sioux Falls. It was every year having this bus trip. And it started with a small group of 10 to 15, and it grew to about 40. But then the company also started having these Viking mm -hmm. bus trips. <laughs> I remember one we went up there was a snowstorm, 
<laughs> we didn't know if we were even going to get out of Minneapolis. <laughs> they may have stopped as quick as they started due to that snowstorm, if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we realized, hey, we have every leader in the company on this bus, and if that's if something happened to this bus. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's like in the office when they'd have the lottery would get up to, you know, 500 million everybody was throwing in yeah. money in the office <laughs> and we go, if we win that's the end of sioux falls construction <laughs> we were <laughs> <always> <laughs> everybody's gonna retire <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, I do remember on that bus trip, though, that Tom had an integral part of a lot of people not feeling very well the next day. Oh, if I remember right. okay. Weren't you maybe part-time bartender on that bus trip? We might have even had to stop and reload the bar on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. The other, the other memory I was told to ask you guys about was maybe on the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of fun but I'm supposed to ask about bid lettings. Bid lettings. <laughs> Different time zone I, bid lettings, maybe? I, I can tell you about the most bizarre bid letting that I have ever been to. We bid this water treatment plant up in the Bismarck, and there were 150 or 175 bid items that we had to fill out. And we finally get the bid, and it's like, 10 minutes before we're due down at City Hall. And now Jack is driving and I'm trying to add up these bid items to get these various totals. And we get there and we're already late. Jack says, you just take it in. So I took it in and they had just opened the first bid. I walked up and slammed our bid to the guy that was at the podium. <laughs> And a gorilla walks in. One of the commissioners has a birthday, and he's got a singing gorilla to come and <laughs> wish him happy birthday with a TV crew. So that all dissipates after about 10 minutes. And another guy comes up out of the audience and slaps his bid down. <laughs> and they do all this math, and they showed us being low. By 400,000, only they had made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't get the job, but it was so weird. Oh, that is hilarious. I do remember, though, that I would always end up going to wherever they were going to receive the bids, and I'd be on the phone last minute. Yeah. So like a pay phone I, somewhere. You'd, oh, yeah. You'd, wow. so we didn't have cell phones. Yet. Yeah. It was yeah. a pay phone. It was either like in a motel room or a pay phone. I had a pager and I had a pocket full of quarters. And every quarter where a gas station was, there was a pay phone. And so then I would call back to the office and we would do our communication that way. Brad, don't you have an interesting story about a different time zone bid? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mar Peterson and I uh, went to Wyoming to bid, and uh, it turns out that uh, we miscalculated the time zone, and oh, we were late. No. <laughs> <laughs> were they gracious? Did they let you in? Or? No, no, they didn't. Oh. No, I don't even know if we turned the bed in. I don't that remember. That was when they walked in the office with their heads <laughs> <laughs> How was your trip? <laughs> well, that would be, that'd be a long drive back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a long, quiet drive. <laughs> oh, man. So... You three made a lot of memories, spent a lot of time with Sioux Falls Construction, now Journey Group, and really made amazing careers, e each of you, in, in your own distinct ways. And, and like you were talking about, the diversity of this company, and, and you each touched such different aspects of it through the years. What about this company made you stick around? Why did you choose to build your career and build this lifetime of work and investment in this company, what influenced that decision? Jack Marshman. Hmm. Yes, Jack ended up, you know, when I started, I was in the asphalt division. During the wintertime when it would slow down, and then he had me doing takeoff and estimating building projects. And then it was in 1980 that Jack moved me over to the buildings division. And it was always the challenge that they would give us 
You know, and it, it was rewarding just to be able to see a building go up and have things work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just build in relationships with all your subs, all your owners, your crew. Mm-hmm. That was the exciting part. Yeah, I think uh, Jack was a very good role model for us. Jack encouraged all of us to get involved in the community, get involved in your church. Mm. It was interesting how Jack was able to negotiate work while other contractors were focused on only hard bid. And Jack was seeing the design build and negotiated work was a future because of all of the problems that arised when you would hard bid something, mm. and then all of a sudden there's a change order, and the change order is costing you way more than it should cost you, or there's problems with delivery times and things like that. And people will do negotiations with you when there's one word involved, trust. Yeah. And they trusted Jack, and I was able to build that same kind of trust at my church. Yeah in Sioux Falls where I went. So Well and we built relationships with some of the designers too. You know, exactly. like Bob Winkles and the Arc Inc. and I know. would have designers call me up and ask me about constructability issues and even design issues and I hmm. would give free advice to them whether they used it or not, but even the DOT would call me up and ask, how would you do this? How would you sequence this project? And the importance of relationships with designers, architects, engineers, as well as the community has always been part of the company's success here. So speaking of projects, if you could pick one project that you worked on as a favorite, tell me what that was and why. I would start out with the Augustana football stadium. Yeah. It was a challenge weather-wise and time-wise and so on, (laughs) but it worked out. Well, you got experience with that one, then you went over and did USF. We did USF next, (laughs) yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I remember one of the first major jobs I did for Avera was a corporate office. Yeah. And... um, Hopefully, that was the beginning of the company being able to build on that. Yeah, look at that relationship now that's grown. So hopefully, that was a good start. What year was that? Oh, I think that was either late 80s or 90, roughly. Hmm. Is it true that you paved the first bike path in Sioux Falls? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) That is amazing. Like, think of... How many people bike the bike path or walk the bike path in Sioux Falls? That, that was quite a project. In fact, Ralph Redenius, who was the loader operator, he would just start down through the trees. And I'd be walking out ahead, you know, trying to figure out where we could go. And, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it was great. You know, and look at it today. That, that makes the park system here yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it really does. When I think about jobs, we've done so many different kinds of jobs. I don't know that I can narrow it down to just one job. One that I think of was uh, Blue Dog Lake Fish Hatchery. Mm. And that was a very diverse job in itself. There was 100 acres of ponds that were built. And we had concrete gate structures to build so they could control the level in the pond. Then we had to put in an influent pump station that brought lake water in from Wabay Lake that pumped water over to three huge rapid sand filters and eventually went into the hatchery building where we <laughs> we had to build these little tanks in here that had to be as smooth as this table so those little fish their jelly sacks didn't get tore. Yeah. (laughs) So we had all these tanks to build. Then we had to erect all these jar racks. When the eggs came in, they went in these jars that constantly had water fed into them. And then this water went through an aeration tower and was recirculated within that system. And then we had to build a residence for the guy that ran the hatchery. 
And then, of course, there were roads in there that were all part of the grading, but it was such a diversity of plumbing and electrical and so... That is amazing. And that strikes me about a lot of the projects that we do. The title of this podcast is called More Than Construction. And we like to highlight the aspects of what we do that is more than just building things. And it is amazing, even in things that you wouldn't expect, rather than just like, okay, here you go, here's the blueprints, build it. You need to learn so much about the operation itself because that informs the way you build it. Like you need to know how a fish hatchery works in order to build it right. And so now you know how a fish hatchery works. Like, how cool is that? I think that's just so cool. And some of our guys who helped on the collector well up north of town, just the science that goes into that and how you're drilling deep and then you drill out horizontally and all of this stuff, the engineering that went into it, they're learning about this whole new aspect of something that never knew about before, never knew existed. I think that's just a really cool aspect of what we do. And I think that's just always fascinating. Well, that that's what makes this career fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, you're always learning and it's exciting. Yeah, it really is. Yep. Every project is unique. Yep. Hmm. Yep. So as we look at Journey Group, Sioux Falls Construction as a whole, as you have been a part of it, grown it, developed it, passed it off to the next group of leaders, and now are observing it, what makes this company different from the rest? I think it's the care that the people here have for the project as a whole. We were instilled that when we were first started here. Take it seriously and do the best you can. But overall, I think it's the care. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with Brad. I think the company has always been focused on customer satisfaction was number one. We want to be leaders in the construction industry. So we're involved in AGC of South Dakota and AGC of America. We want to be involved in the community. So we're involved in the chamber. We're involved in nonprofits. People get to know you, and that's how you build trust yeah. in what your capabilities are. Yeah. Yeah, there's a legacy of quality work and people who build quality work <laughs> and take pride in what they do. I think that's really special. Yeah. You know, I know the people are very proud because look at the longevity of the field people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, let alone all of the majors here within the office. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing. And I think a lot of your subcontractors and suppliers, they see that. And so they want to work with us. So they get on board and play the game with us. Yeah. Well, we're approaching the end of our time. I've got one final question to talk about before we wrap up. As you are looking at Journey Group now and the ways that Journey Group is growing, what do you guys see as the future for Journey Group? Are you excited about what's to come? Do you have any words of advice for moving forward? What are your thoughts on the future here at Journey Group? Well, I'm happy for the guys because the opportunity is there. You look at our region and what's happening around here, there's the opportunity. Yeah. So go for it. Yeah, I would agree. I think Sioux Falls is unbelievable. The city has exploded in yeah. just three to five years. So it presents lots of opportunities for the company. And Frank and Jack wanted this company to go another 100 years. And I think because they have a lot of great people working here, that's surely possible. Yeah. I can see unlimited potential, the way the city's growing, the way the Journey Group conducts business. The reason why I like to work here was because of the people, mm. and uh, it's all about people. Yeah, it's an exciting future for sure. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in, sharing your stories and your memories of your time here at Journey Group. As someone who has personally benefited from both your work in the community and your work in this company, it's been wonderful to meet each of you. Thank you. Thank you for what you've done. And thank you for being on the show. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in. Please remember to follow and share this podcast. That helps us, and it helps you stay up to date on new episodes that come out. 
Journey Group's mission is to positively impact lives by building community. And the way our leaders accomplished this in the past inspires us to continue that mission in the future. So join us again next time as we continue to explore what it means to do more than construction. Thanks for listening.